Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, the Dartboard, and the Gaussian. Early in our course, we did this integral, e to minus alpha x squared over all x, and we did that by setting up another integral with y, and then multiplying together, and going to polar coordinates, integrating, and then taking the square root, and this is our result. I call that the polar coordinates trick. Then, we looked at some powers of x with the Gaussian, e to the minus alpha x squared, and here, is a trick which I call the derivative trick where instead of doing the integral we take a derivative and in doing a derivative of this top integral we actually do this integral. So minus dd alpha of this top integral allows us to bring this right in since alpha and x are independent and brings down the x squared. Notice that we are pretending alpha is a variable and by taking the derivative of the answer we get the answer of a more complicated integral. This is a quick review because I need these two integrals in this section for the dartboard analysis. Well, this analysis here is due to Dr. Dan Teague of our own school here in North Carolina, a great high school, the North Carolina School of Science and Math in Durham, North Carolina. That's about a little over 300 kilometers to our east, a little over 200 miles. I think it's around 220 miles from Asheville, North Carolina, where we are here in the mountains of western North Carolina. And here as we head toward a dartboard, the Bandit dartboard made by DMI, www.darts.com, image courtesy Amazon.com. We're pretty good dart players, so we hit the center more than we hit the outer region, and we'll use this dartboard to analyze it and arrive at the Gaussian and statistics. First, some definitions. The mean or the average is taking x times the probability distribution and integrating over all the possible values. And for the measure of the spread, how wide or thin our graph is, we take each x, subtract from it the mean, and square that quantity so we don't have to worry about plus and minus. And that average of this thing gives us the variance, sigma squared, and the square root of the variance is sigma, which is called the standard deviation. Well, here we're off to play some darts. And when you play some darts, we're pretty good. We hit the center most of the time, the center region. However, we sometimes hit these folks here. Unfortunately, this little guy gets hit sometimes. Well, what's the probability of hitting that little guy? Well, the probability distribution in the x dimension, let's call that capital P of x, and the probability distribution in the y dimension, call that capital P of y. Uh, the, the functions will have the same form because of the symmetry. So what's the probability of being in this strip? from this boundary in, and inside here to this boundary. Well, that's capital P of x times dx. What's the probability of being in this strip? Well, that's capital P of y times dy. And the probability of being in both strips to hit this little fellow up here, that's given by the product of the two probabilities. Notice that the probability is a function of the distance from the center, if you think in terms of polar coordinates. So it doesn't depend on the angle theta. In other words, the probability of hitting anything around this circular region here, this little ribbon here, at the same distance has to be the same. So in that case, we can write the probability as some function of r, the probability distribution, and the trick is to take a derivative with respect to theta here and set it equal to zero and get a differential equation we can work with. So let's do that. The partial derivative of g with respect to theta must be zero. And we take the derivative using the product rule, the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Then we go to polar coordinates here with the transformation. x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta and use the chain rule to write the partial of p with respect to theta as the derivative of p with respect to x and the partial of x with respect to theta and similarly for the y. Well, the derivative with respect to theta, see working on that x, the partial of x with respect to theta is minus r sine of theta and the partial of y with respect to theta is r cosine theta. Well, r sine theta is nothing more than y so what we'll do here is put the minus sign down and the rest here is y and the derivative here partial y with respect to theta is r cosine theta which is x so we simply put the x here then we write the one term here over on the left hand side and use a standard notation where p prime of some variable 
means the derivative of p with respect to that variable, say in each case here, left and right. And we want all the x's in, on one side of the equation, all the y's on the other. So we divide both sides by y to get the y over here in the denominator on the right and get the p of y over here. And we get the p of x on the left and the x on the left. And since x and y are independent, these must equal some constant, which we'll call capital C. You can see here the same differential equation arises for x and y. Well, we'll concentrate on x. So we'll solve the differential equation here the usual way by separation of variables where we have the p variable on the left, the x variable on the right, and we get all the p stuff on the left, all the x stuff on the right, so you bring the x over to the right. And the integration is the natural log of p is equal to capital C x squared over 2 plus a constant of integration. Then we write this as p of x is equal to e to this stuff and write this as a product of two exponentials since exponents add and then take this grouping here to be the constant a. Note that Gaussian there that has shown up. Well since the probability decreases as we get farther from the center this c must be negative so we'll let it equal some negative k where k is greater than zero and this is our result. We're going to work now to find out what a is and get some insight as to what k represents. Well we do this by normalization the probability when we integrate over all the values of x must be 1. So therefore we set this up to solve for a and notice that one of our integrals that I introduced earlier is needed here with alpha as k over 2. So this integral becomes 2 over k inside that square root and that's our result. We can solve for a and that gives us our normalization constant and there we have it out here in front with our Gaussian. Now what does this k depend on? Well k here will show depends on the standard deviation. Uh, first you might consider the mean but the mean is zero and you can see that by the symmetry if you were to integrate x times p of x you'd have an odd times an even function which is an odd function and integrated over a symmetric uh, region will give you zero. But we know from symmetry that mu is zero, so mu is no help. What about the uh, standard deviation squared, the variance? Well, let's try it out. Mu is zero, so that's going to simply be x squared times our probability distribution integrated over all x. And let's set that up to do that integral. And here we go. And this integral has the normalization constant, has the x squared, and the Gaussian. So I need to do this integral, and I remember from earlier in this discussion, we introduced this uh, integral by way of review, and by letting alpha equal to, you know, k over 2, 1 over alpha is 2 over k, we can get the result. The normalization constant is here, 1 half, and 1 over alpha is 2 over k, and the 1 over alpha inside that square root, 2 over k inside that square root. The first factor and the last factor, when multiplied, gives the 1, 1 half of 2 gives 1, and the result is for the variance simply 1 over k. Therefore k is 1 over the variance and we can write our general result like this. <clears throat> However, mu is not equal to 0 in all cases, in most general cases, so what we'll do here is we'll do the old shift trick to shift the function to the right so it can be centered on some non-zero mu. And we do that by replacing x with x minus mu. And there you have it, the most famous Gaussian in one dimension, so important in statistics.